Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, always in the series about Kotlin for beginners, we are going to learn about Kotlin tests. Let's get started. So here I'm having a simple function that will check if a password is valid. And before using this function, we have to test it. Either you can use like simple test here, like you would say is valid password and you would check like, for example, this one. And let's just bring the result. This is kind of manual test. So it is false, it's not a valid password. But if I try to add like more numbers and something like that, maybe to work. Still false, it's require four characters like that. A, still false, then it needs something like that. Let me check. And it is true. So it requires more than eight letters, numbers, uppercases, and so on. And this special sample. This is kind of manual test because then you'll have to delete that and write your code, right? But we need to have tests for this specific function or this specific feature to check its validity every time. Because some, maybe some developers, some new requirements said that we shouldn't use this one. If you delete this one, for example, or this condition, for example, it is still work. That's the idea of test, right? So maybe we can cover tests in more depth. There is a great book called Unit Testing Principles, this one, Unit Testing Principles, Practices and Patterns. This is a great book for every reader for tests. So in order to write the test, go here to project and here you'll find something called test. Now here I'm having a simple Maven project. We will see how we can do it and also in, in Android Studio. Here you can just write a class. Let's call it password test, something like that. And we will be using Kotlin test. Kotlin tests are this package, Kotlin test. Now this package provides annotation and utility functions for performing assertion, but it is independent of the test framework. This is the main idea. It is independent from the test framework. So you can use JUnit with it. You can use anything else. Now, in order to write our first test, you have to write a function. And this function, you can name it whatever it is doing, whatever it is testing. For example, test, like I don't know, you can write test here, you can write anywhere. And here, let me just write some tests. First of all, if you, you need to mark this as test. So you have to use an annotation called test. If you see, you will see this annotation come from here or come from here. We will be using Kotlin test. The first one, as we saw, it's coming from JUnit and this for Kotlin test. Now, if you do that, you will see this green button to run the test. If you run it right now, it will just pass. The test is valid, zero milliseconds, because we didn't test any. Now here we will be testing. What we will be testing? We will be testing is valid password and we will pass wrong password, for example. We will pass this one. We should expect this one to be false. So we are asserting this one to be false. What we should do, we should do assert and assert like you can assert something directly here or assert true or assert false. I'm asserting this to be false. As you can see, it is coming from the Kotlin test, right? I'm asserting this to be false. And if I run it, it will pass because it is false. Now you should always have a state that your test should fail because that way you know you are testing the right. That's one of the principles of test-driven development. You should always see your test fail first. Now I should return this to true, run it. So it will be false. Exactly the test password, test assertion expected value to be true. Then we should return it to false like that. So this will be false. You can name this function like test password empty, or for example, test password null, something like that. This should always give us false. Okay, it is working. We can write another function, test password with all criteria, for example, something like that. We will pass everything like A, A, B, B, for example, small letters, big letters, symbols, something like that. And we should expect this one to be true, right? But we should run it to see it fail first. Well, usually in test-driven development, we don't even write this. We don't write this until we have a the failure test, then we should write our code, then we should run our test again. So here I'll be just returning this to true, and I think it will be true. Awesome. So this is meeting all the criteria. So this is how you can write simple tests. You can run it here. You can, from this button, you can run all the tests. For example, you have a large test suite, so you can press this button so it will run everything. But sometimes you need to just test one criterion or one specific function for a class or something else or specific behavior. So you need to run only that test because it will take a lot of time. Now, there is something great about Kotlin that here for the test name, you can do something like the following. You can type this, I don't know how we call it, like this markers, and you can write it with spaces. No problem, test pa password with all criteria. It's awesome to do just this name 
So as previously in Java, for example, when you need to write the given when then format, for example, given when then is a way to write your test and also to name it. Given a false password, when executing this one, we should expect true or false. Given password with all criteria, when checking its validity, for example, it should return true or false. So that way your tests are more readable with content. Now, if I just rerun that, the name will be clear here, test password with all criteria. That's the benefit of using Kotlin here. Now, the same test, we can use them in, in Android Studio. If you go back to Android Studio, here in the project, you will see two folders, right? We'll be talking extensively about tests, especially in, in, in Android in the future. Here you have tests in Kotlin, all right? This is test of Kotlin, and this is test also in Kotlin. But the difference is this one is instrumented. It means it's run only on an emulator, and this one will run on local machine. So these tests are more faster than this one. You should always write a lot of tests here if you can. And you can't do that if your application isn't decoupled, especially for the business logic and the things that doesn't require any Android component. For example, if you are testing the user interface or testing, for example, shared preferences or data store or room database, you can't do that on your computer, right? You have to do it on the emulator. But for specific things, like I don't know if you are checking, for example, this function, let me copy this function. I'll be using this function here. Let me just do a companion object. So this function should be decoupled from the Android components, okay? So we can test it in decoupled way. So you should always keep that in mind. So I basically, I can write the same exact test here. Let me just copy the test. Now this valid password, I should import them only. It's coming from here. And if I run those, they will run on my local machine here. It will be some, some kind of building, but it will work just fine. As now you can't use the, the same thing like this quotation mark. If you go here to use them like that and use some spaces, if you run it, it won't work. Okay, basically you have to use the previous way like underscores and something else. But now if you run this, it will work just fine. I'm using it, but without spaces. So the spaces part are only for local tests. So keep that in mind. So this is it for this video. I hope you understand how we can use the Kotlin test only framework. We didn't cover how to write good tests, test driven development, like how to decouple your test and your code. So this way, this thing you should learn by yourself. There is a great book, this one, Unit Testing, First False Practices and Patterns by Vladimir Khorikov. This is a great book. The examples are in C sharp, but it doesn't matter. This is just examples you can apply anywhere because this book contains principles, practices, and patches. This is a great book to read. And the way to use these principles apply to any language, as I say. We saw how to use them in Kotlin here and also in Android Studio project. So that's all for this video. Thanks a lot for watching to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Assalamu alaikum.